No, that's correct. You mentioned you, you often work with live models. Now, to my eye... But I haven't like, done that for a while now. You haven't? Okay. Because I'm into uh, metaphysical energy art, abstract. But it seems like, to my eye, a lot of them are the same woman. Is that true? Uh, I think, uh, no. Okay. Uh, some are, uh, yeah, repeated. They are repeated on the board or they repeated like, uh, uh, it's, not, it's in the back, the big lady with a... At the very beginning, what I did is, at the very beginning, I want to have a, I want to have, I want them to be able to continue and have a recognizable of theme. Yeah, I see, so yeah. at the beginning, yeah, I, I was, that. I yeah, love yeah. the sensuousness of uh, Georgia Keith. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm always drawn to very, things are very, uh, like, like orchids or, or mm -hmm. amarello inside. Or, or inside flowers, it's like a female organ right, and a male right. organ, so yeah, especially right. in an organ. So I put every, and also Kelly Lily. So those are three flowers where you saw in my studio. Those are three flowers I painted. I thought about should I paint the flowers, like, but Georgia keep already done so well, and I didn't want to do that. And so I actually put, sit them in the Kelly Lily because I didn't want all these models to be painting alone. So at the beginning stage, they are not here because there are so many paintings. But I put them in Kelly Lily because kind of presence of male because I'm a straight woman. I want to have a, some male presence. Okay. And I somehow thought phallic symbol of Kelly Lily was very much of a, in a, in a, in a, always. So in some way, there was a male was always with me. In, in, and, and the paintings like this one down here, and I actually did this painting for a long time. And I didn't show that before. Because my beginning of a piece, woman was lying down. She had flowers here, and and uh, and she's sleeping with the orchids on her hair. And this was just in, this is part of the inside the orchid. There's a bulbs like this. But my second painting, I just split the end because it just can help her remind me. Because I have a, have a pose, a model, be a sensuous, you know. And then I says. We think of something really peaceful and peaceful place. So there's an orchid sitting on the top, and there's part of the orchids in the bottom. And almost like she can always, at the time, I was still, you can tell, I, I want somebody's protections. So in the presence of male, it's holding like that, and then almost that symbol looks like the head of the guy's penis. But it's actually a bulb of orchids that it's on her head. But yet she has a wings and she's in the in track of that the power, but the flap in the wings to try to get out all the time. So in different way, you're like right here, there's a, the wings are there because I want to create, I yes. yearn for those freedoms. And and that's that's what the butterfly is for. The, so with the butterfly, I go to places when I felt very lonely in New York City. I used to resonate myself with the Chrysler building. Mm -hmm. And but if you looked at the butterfly, like I said, butterflies sucked and they travel to flower to flower drinking nectar again. If you see the there's a lot of detail people miss. If you go very close, sometimes butterfly have faces and she the butterflies are the Kelly Lily flowers drinking nectar of the flowers with the what do you call this antenna? Why don't we open it up to to the people? Say so get get some reactions and questions. Okay. And uh, and get a conversation going. Yeah. I, I think it's clear you think on a lot of levels creatively. You 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 go instinctively, but you're also very you have this whole concept and story. Um, let's see if we... It's, it's, a, it's a lot about things that I went through. What you see it in the color, everything uh, in the color is what I felt. Let me move back so we can yeah. take it. Okay. So, uh, until all this color work, from unimpeded body is the only one people who can relate. It's the one that I was expressing myself and I didn't know how hard I had become not making and, and, and leaving the artwork. I was just slowly dying. And, and butterfly, I intentionally brought the butterfly after that one uh, gilded cage in black and white. When I looked at it, it was so cold and I couldn't breathe for a week. Mm. And that's when butterfly came. 
I can read, and I have that small black and white, it's extensively write about in the book, at the beginning, how I the butterfly came. And from that on, that butterfly took me to place to become who I am, to able to leave myself. I'm no longer just interested in what we go through as women or other human beings, but to now explore with the relationship with other, how energy reacts with other, and, and also surprise the element comes in, inspires me, something totally new. That's what happening. So right. any questions that you can ask? Any comments, questions, reactions? I see um, that you've seen a lot of females. Yeah. And not that many males. Is I there a reason why? I have males, they are, they are in my school. Oh, I see, I see. So these are more like feminine uh, show. But uh, the, that is very interesting because when I paint male, uh, one thing that I always repeatedly say is that I don't, in a female, all this work, I project myself yes. in it. Yes. So sometimes when, when I have a very peaceful day, those days when I want to make one artwork a week at least and come home with it, those times, sometimes like a Tinkerbell one on the back that with the wings and just wandering eyes and because that model reminded me of Tinkerbell, her expressions. But most other one that I project my feelings in there. But when I paint the male, I realized that I could project myself in a guy with a testosterone. And what I realized is that I draw a very stylized drawing. And while I was doing whole sensuous nature, I actually do have that in website. I would actually, those people who came to my studio, uh, mostly uh, early in the morning, late at night, and uh, I would discreetly put their time and only first name only in somewhere in the corner. But I would do feverish sketch. I would do ink drawing, but it's more realistic. I did that same time, but in different time. And when they're more private setting, when they come visit me, some people challenge some people because they want to see if I can draw. So that says, I'm going to draw you, but you're going to be thrown out. Or, or, or some people, you know, they happen to be interested in came. But what I did, I have like extensive uh, drawing that you see in the black and white, you will see the called feverish, feverish stroke, which I will draw also again, ink pen and the sharpies, no eraser, and I will just sketch them on the paper. And I have a collection of it, which I posted on the website. But I do not project I do not travel with them in a, in a painting. I don't project myself in the mail. Somehow, I don't do that in the mail when I sketch. But I, I you know, it, it would be like, I'm, I'm curious what you would do with the mail form. Oh yeah, you if know. you have it in my website, they are just- oh, no, no, I think I saw a few things because you know, you do mostly women, but I'm yeah. curious what, what your take on a man, man's, you know. I, you I, I, did, I did some. I did some with the third eyes when there was an Empire State Building had an animal in danger. Animal, remember, Empire State Building was lighting, was changing for the distress elements of that part. And now we have third eyes. I did something similar, but I did very few. And most of them, what I see, you see in website is just a feverish stroke yeah. sketches. But you mentioned that you um, were influenced by Georgia O'Keeffe. Oh yeah, that's one of the uh, one well, of the. I used to live in Santa Fe, so, so I did this. Yeah, yeah. I, Have you been there before? Yeah, I visited her place. So, so beautiful. Yeah, uh, yeah. but she did a lot of flower, and when I become a very self confident and I started drawing those, uh, I made uh, all the queens of Egypt. Yeah. I made a third eyes for then uh, that was I didn't know that we had a third eyes here actually. I also made a prince when he died. In the quick, I do like within uh, expressing myself because that was the only celebrity who passed away and it was distressed me because I realized I love the prince and mm -hmm. I have third eyes open because now third eyes opening is either he's died or, or when I was very distressed I realized all my paintings eyes were closed or I can paint I can paint the front I would, there's 2009 serious time after that painting I just made a lot of women's back view. And as one woman turned around, then I dove came out because I wanted something to comfort me and someone to protect. And and it just I I have them those angels come in my paintings, and I have to look at it because I look at it and I see myself. That's what I was doing in female, but I cannot draw a male and look at myself in a male. And that was uh, uh, that was difference. 
did you consciously go from color to black and white on purpose, or, or like it was just more like subconsciously, you know, uh, black and white on the side? Because it uh, seems like you're all bright colors, and all of a sudden it's black and white on the side. Yes, I actually. Yes, I did, but the, my doctor also told me that I was allergic to certain contact, allergic to certain pain, like polar <laughs> flu and uh, things like that. He goes, why don't you paint with something? And that maybe could have been influenced too, but this, I was so interested in lines. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, I mean, like it's a fantastic journey from this to that. Yeah. It's like, wow, how, how did you? No, because uh, I realized that energy is this, this emotion that I express in here, emotion I express is just an energy, it's moving, yeah. it's shifting, it's a charge. It's very like, uh, this is very like Kusama you know, to me. Do you know the painter of Kusama? I don't know. Oh, you know the Japanese painter, you know. No, I don't. does all the dots and everything. No. Do you say Kusama, right? No. That's the name, okay. I, I Turn it out. Right. It's very, you know. I only know, I only know uh, energy is moving and shifting because in when I was in a group of people, uh, just like, you know, like you, let's say you go somewhere and you find somebody very attractive and you thought you're very interested and then some other hot woman come in, your energy just shifts in another direction. And I thought, what's the best way to do it? Because thoughts can be moved. Energy is, is in simple way, the reason that thoughts I actually made a seahorse with a start of coloring, actually black and white, because some of them that I had that used black and white, I had to wash the whole painting out because then I just realized that only with the dots that energy can be moved. So I erased it. I actually had a slight pinkish last year, but I got rid of it because you can move easily and express my energy is Energy is constantly shifting and moving, and I can only see it's moving with the dots. Mm -hmm. It made out of the little dots. This energy of the emotions, of this dots, emotions that, uh, I just see them as a dot. I cannot see solid line moving. Yes, yeah, so it's more fantasy, like, I mean, compared to this, it's more realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more fantasy. So it's all because, not because somebody, I don't know who Japanese name that you mentioned. And for me, it's when I realized my emotion is energy, that's when that came with the line. And there's so much going on. I, I might, who knows, I might eventually maybe put some color later, but for now, yeah, yeah. there's so you much. Know, I mean, you might. Yeah, I mean, I you might have a very slight pink. I actually did have a you yes. do have some, but no, no, I did have it before. I, when I showed those three work, mm -hmm. I want to have a flesh tone, so I just have a very tint of a simpler, but my intention of not to put the colors in it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe color might take away from this. Yeah, so I actually did that. Yeah. And uh, what year was that? Uh, the 2020, March 2020, I have tinted up it because my feelings are about human emotions. So I wanted to have a tint of a flesh tone. And if you notice, they are all changed to just a very simpler pinkish tone. Yeah, because it's getting simpler and simpler, but only in a flesh tone, less color. And so I did have those three. But as more and more things happening, I just realized I like, I could actually express without having figure. I could have a body, I could have a body over here of a male body, energy of a triangular, a female body in an oval shape floating in a different place with the polka dots, and I didn't want to, it didn't make sense to have a flesh tone. Flesh tone made sense in over here when an imageable, a figurative abstract, but flesh tone didn't make sense. When it was male papa's here, the angular lips, yeah. mama's here with the long eyelashes, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. So I got rid of that pink. That's what happened. So it was a gradual moving away from my figurative. What I am interested in my work, whether it's an abstract or a figurative, about a human emotion that inspired by life, beginning to full circle.
Do you feel like you still nice? That was... I, I, I have it only maybe May saw. Yeah, I have it. Some of them look a little surrealist-like. But yes, I was trained with those. So yes, I have those. I have those from very early days, which I become interested in things that are moving in life. I am interested in alive things. It doesn't excite me when things are not alive. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't paint the non-moving images. Even they are non-moving, they become alive in my painting. Otherwise, they will not be there. A question. Yes. Um, the, um, I noticed that your, the medium that you use is uh, uh, one crayon pastel. It, no, one of the ones that um, I see that you like a lot is crayon. Um, you know some of the images over here. Yeah. Um, so I'm just curious as to um, what what do you like about it? Because well, I, I see that you do like. Movies. What I realize is I can draw in color and design everything at the same time without dipping in the water. I could, I chose like five different colors. I chose a very primary color only. The reason they kind of tied together because I don't pick the, I don't use the whole palette. I use a very primary colors or certain things that I like and I just mix them together while I'm doing it. I know because of, uh, like I said, I was trained from atelier from when I was young. And my mother happened to be believing me and uh, against my father's will that I was actually, uh, I grew up in there and and I would skip the school like just like athletic team and I will go to big, beautiful cannabis university and they give me piece of paper and paint. So I'm kind of master in sense of colors. So I can just pick the primary and I'll mix it while I'm doing it. So what I like about it is the speed. I can mix, look at you, and come up with a five different, ten different way to draw you same time in color. So that's what those are. So is that copies or is that right? That's originals, yes. I will look at you, I will draw the color, everything same time. And that's, that's what uh, ability to do that. Where in an oil, well, there's some like those paintings mixed with the oil and acrylic. It need, it need a plan. I got to change the water, then I got to go to oil, and I got to prepare it to do. There are different process. And instant gratification of improvised process, it's got become a less simpler, perhaps because that's even less medium is required. It's a simple ink pen and sharpie that I create this. There, I gotta go, I have a five different, a primary, four, whatever, primary colors, and a lot of cleaning up to do. This is just so simple with a, just an ink pen, I can finish the whole piece. See, that's how maybe, that makes maybe sense about monochromatic color, mm -hmm. because improvisation process, what, what other people's energies, I'm thinking, orchestrating like, you know, you play this, you play this, no, it's just about to go chaos. Now I think you go and I'm gonna, let me intervene this all, you all finish now. Or in that process, when I just have an ink pen, it was simpler, even, but even in this, even in this, this is first time color came out. When I first went back to making artwork, I wanna see if I forgot how to draw. So I did it with charcoal, then I started with the coloring that I realized I was good at. Then I move on to this one. So you saw that, right? 2005, 2006. I'll do black and charcoal and that'll do so well, some gallery. And then I do, uh, next one, I do the color and draw. Look at the same time, just color and draw at the same time. When I did so well, after about three and I got bored. When I did enough or bored or something triggered me, it just changed, just I did enough. I'm not the type of person this sells well or I was luckily not restricted financially, had to sell and forced to be glued to it. Maybe that's difference for me, had a, a freedom to always exploring what's new and, and, and what inspires me. I just follow my inspirations. And, mm -hmm. and, and when I do so much, the elements will disappear, new elements that'll stay with you, like infatuation stage. I'm in love with something, 
or they will carry on for a while and disappear, they will gradually change. But perhaps that ink, but the only thing that I would say is the antenna may be still up here, but also the, 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 the speed and improvisation process is done so fast, maybe it wasn't naturally go to ink pen. But if you, if you later on see my website, you can see ink pen drawing up realistic while I was doing this. And, and even that, I also now stop. I would do so much and I'd move on. So always there's a time period. One thing consistent is that my work is always about a very human emotion if I relate to life. Whether somebody I know, somebody I met, because you're interesting, you're attractive, or you're something very unique about you, or just something. But in this drawing process, I will designate who also goes first, who goes second, who goes third. And when I go intervene. Yes. Um, I have two questions for you. What, what, what type of poetry do you read? And secondly, uh, uh, do you like Frida Kahlo? Which is? Frida Kahlo. Oh, I like the Frida Kahlo's of, um, I like the Frida Kahlo's of not care of what went on. I like the how she, it's kind of like my painting, but I, I, could, never, I, 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 that. I could never uh, I uh, that. Uh, project myself in such a grotesque way, or I didn't simply go through, have a, have a car accident right. in a bus, mm -hmm. uh, uh, have a fracture bone and constantly living in the pain. I didn't have that, and, and, and I, I am also the type of person that I always, if I'm in a very distress, I will be distressed making that kind of painting, but I will get out, I'll find myself to get out. And so I'm looking for a route to, uh, uh, I will find a way to find myself happiness in somewhere, and because I can only be there for so long. Like when they're, Painting with uh, the tears, with uh, the lump up here, over here. My nose was bleeding. I had two other paintings. This was somebody very close to me had a hole on his lung. So the first time I ever paint a lung, because he had a hole and the pneumonia, had a lung and a hole here. He was very dear to me. That was the person I was in relationship with before, and I got out. So then I realized how important he was also in my life. You know. And and I was very, and then I did take care of him in the solitary room for a month. And then the hospital didn't know what it was. Then I came to New York City and, I, and I, my nose was bleeding. It was in so much stress. I met a man lying down with a hole in his lung. People thought he was in love. It was just he literally had a hole was way up here where X ray X ray didn't detect it. And so anybody who had contact they like made us have a tuberculosis test. And during that time, I made it each time painting. And then I made it this, and I was in New York City, back to my studio. And I remember my, I woke up and the nose was bleeding and how stressed I was. Then I had this lung appeared. And then you see always my painting where sensitive area of your feeling of emotion. You will see a little throat that will have a, a redness in all different painting or something like that. Yes. Right? Yeah, that's right. I talked about Frida. Frida kind of does Yeah, yeah, because of it. Yeah, yeah. Frida kind of, but in more beautiful way. And not so much about, I don't want to paint. I don't want to paint. I don't watch grotesque movie because I will have a nightmare. Poetry, what I read, mm -hmm. I read a, 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 a Kyle Gibran. Mm -hmm. And I love Kyle Gibran's. Did you write Prophet? Prophet. Right. I give that to gifts to a lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. I love that drawing as well. He are inspired. You religious or not? What? I am are you not religious? religious, but my families are Christian because of Koreans. You know, they're all Christians. <laughs> uh, but uh, Kahil Gibran's uh, Kahil Gibran's writing moves me because it's real. It, it's real and it's about life. And everything's about here is. If the people resonate my work, I think some people do came to my studio, they, they made the music and recite the poetry. You were there. Once. He, he was there once. 
And matter of fact, uh, she came to the opening, uh, uh, Irina, I, I, Irene, and, and, and I met them at the opening, at the, uh, what is it, the fancy place. So uh, what time? Royalty. What's what's the time? lip start design and the penthouse. He's, I'm glad you're here so we can talk about that. I made a third series of these paintings in a paperwork. It was happened to be our mutual friend. And they came to my visit my studio. This is one of the incidents. I can talk about it because you happen to be here, right? And That's you can kind sure. of focus on him too. So they both came to my studio and when she walks in the middle, this is happened very often. And uh, she came inside and she just she just went like just went crazy, right? She was like like touching herself and she goes like oh, like and she recites something in Russian. Yes, she's a Ukrainian, but she speaks Russian. Okay. Yeah, she's a magazine editor of In Love at the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, she was a Ukrainian magazine editor. So she moved so much that I was so touched. Like, I, because it, when it happened, that each time it touched me so much. And three days later, she came. I don't know if you know the story. So she came with a beautiful flower, which I posted. And she wanted me drawn. I always draw model, but I never draw them. But I did draw some people, personal people who saw my studio, the keys get out of my chair, and I, would, I did draw them. And uh, some men and some, but in her case, it was woman. So she came, she was very shy about it. So she had a thang underwear on. She said, in the, but so I took a lot of, I said, in my return, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take a photograph for you and have your time of now will be remembered but I'm gonna now draw the do a series of this red painting. I was very drawn to at the time. I always go through a series of things. Mm -hmm. So I was into red. So she posed for me three days later. She, now you know the story. She brought, you can go back and trace in Facebook or Instagram, I talk about her. And so I made a painting of her in the spa and she was lying on my bed. She was the only person I drew in because she recited that poetry. And you translate it for me at the end, right on the spot. And I don't know what it was. I hope she wrote it somewhere. So then I made a painting of her. At the end, she got almost angry. So I, because she looked at the work, and she goes, "I know what I have to do to look good." What I didn't realize at the time, I only want to see the beauty of the people. Mm -hmm. That's why you asked me. They were saying models. Mm -hmm. I said they all say, "I want to meet your model. I want to meet your model." But. What I realized is, me, without realizing, I was being plastic surgeon in my art. I just made them beautiful way I only want to see her, so I can't really say it. Maybe so you want to idealize, basically. I, I, yeah, I always, my painting will have a very beautiful teardrop shape of breast. So I, would, I made all these elements, and she got really, like, almost, I thought she was really angry at the end. So six years later, she sent me a message because I look like that now. <laughs> and she goes, everything you say is true. So there's a, a, the, the very famous painter of the 18th century who reminds me a lot. She painted, uh, she painted uh, Antoinette, uh, Le Brown or something that, uh, what's her name? That There was a very famous um, artist, uh, Le Brown or, uh, I wrote about her actually, I watched the movie. And she was the only one who was accepted in the academy mm -hmm. in the 18th century. Wow. She made a, what she did when she painted Antoinette, she made her more beautiful than she was. And so Antoinette chose her as the... Oh. Yeah, 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 that, that movie. Yeah, 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 she's a French painter, right? Yeah, French painter. Yeah, that's the name, I think with a G after that. I thought it was a Braun or something. Yeah, anyway, yes, 18th century painter. So. I wrote about her and I wrote a story of uh, Irene. Yeah. And she says, that is so true. She sent me a message in private, that is so true. That's what really happened. And uh, uh, and she then she came, she was pregnant. She came and she's 20, 20 when she's identical twin. She came here and we had a picture of her and I have not yet made a bigger series, but I have that series of three What she made. She's in one of the red food and her hand raised up like this, and I made a painting of her. Yeah. After she, and the, but there's people who made music, which I create uh, in, uh, uh, infatuation series. After that, somebody who can make a sound 
or who can write like that, and why can't I translate that into color? And that kind of inspiration, I will create a whole group, but I have to be inspired, truly inspired. And that's when I, that's when I create something. And I'm glad that someone is here who witnessed that because uh, if I say something and it could be true or not true, but he was there trust me. Yeah. He was there, can, can you just hear on his face? He was there with her, and I have my third series of this painting and from live model in my studio because she recited the poetry and she brought the most amazing flowers and, and gifts for me and I made a painting of her and and now until this day she has a beautiful picture of herself and she knows one of that painting is her. Beautiful story. Yeah. Well, anything else? This has been great. Um, I want to know with her with her name. Um, I was Googling what you were saying. Was it Elizabeth LeBron? Yeah, Elizabeth LeBron. Okay, so is that the woman? Thank you. Uh, LeBron's, uh, it's Elizabeth yeah. LeBron. Thank you. Okay, the guillotine, right? Yeah, 18th century. Right, okay. And uh, I, I think I particularly uh, relate to her because her life was very difficult. Right. She right. didn't give up the painting. She traveled through all the way to Russia right. with her daughter and right. something like that. And I know for Frida Kahlo, but she had the luxury of already becoming a famous because she was married to uh, Diego. Diego. And Jojo Keith, like the Sullivan Gallery, Gigi Sullivan came because like, right. forget about that flower because you're much better than Jojo Keith. And I, I was very surprised because here's somebody I really inspire and respect. But it is true, Jojo Keith also married the Alfred Sibylins. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually, on the other hand, I did have an offer, but uh, not an offer, I'm not so sure. I went out to dinner with them and I want another thing, but I refused to do that box. Mm -hmm. So only he knows, I can't say who it is, but like, I am offered some time, but I refuse to cheapen my artwork that way. And I feel like I should make it first, and if I choose to go that route, it's fine, but I'm not going to marry them to, for my artwork to go somewhere. Uh, matter of fact, actually, people, encouraged me to go to that route. <laughs> they would tell me that I could be a gay for, for the for the do this, but I just couldn't picture myself doing it. But both Carlo and LeBron stood out on their own. They didn't really, you know, Diego was his own person, but Carlo was her own. She had been her own, but her really? fame, and he only noticed because it was a, a, a way I see it, those two persons married to somebody and it, it, it come after. And uh, and uh, the LeBron, LeBron is different because she she got into male academy on her own. And on her own, not by marriage to someone. And I respect that. That's why I actually wrote about her and I resonated with her. And I can't think of any other female artist made her own way and fighting her own way like I, I I am a spicy person, mm -hmm. and I will fight my own way. I will reject it no matter how big you are, how small you are. I'm a authentic person. I'm a very loyal person, and 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 my authenticity will not be taken away by, and I will not lose credit by doing that way, unless I find that person terribly attractive and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations! Yeah. <laughs> Say truthfully, and that's what I love about Michael. I knew. I just sat here. You did all so, that. So, how, 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 how did you two know each other? I mean, did you meet? Uh, actually, yeah, we didn't talk about that. It was 2016, and I had a pneumonia. And uh, I actually, if you decide to come back on, I think that's interesting. So, yeah. Uh, so 2016. Well. I didn't talk about that, how I started in New York. I want to talk about that. I was painting a lot, and I have hundreds of paintings, but I never showed. I walked around and find a way to, how to show artwork, but maybe because there was a lot of movement in it, I didn't really know whether my work, because I see a lot of work in the gallery and have a lot of movement, and my work was more related to the 21 some century, whatever, doing from studio drawings. Mm -hmm. And then, so I didn't really, I just was 
it was for me to survive and be happy. I'm just trying to become a happy person. And, and that's what I was doing. But in 2015, 2013, someone saw my work uh, uh, and, 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 and uh, I only had a web gallery created by Apple Store. And someone saw my work and decided to put in the online magazine Artista because he loved my work. It moved him. So he won a launch magazine with a great artisan and I was chosen. I never shown anyone. And I was already uh, shown in the magazine, 2013. Then 2015, one of his friends asked me to show the one guy at the restaurant in Midtown. And that November 2015, so I showed there in a pop restaurant. I loved it. Everybody, like people came and I was just, they were so moved and they just, and, and, and encouraged me. Then 2007, that, that made me keep going. I love that feeling of showing my work. So 2016, I thought about going to Cleo, but then I got pneumonia and then I was lying in bed. And then Cleo Arfeo, one of those uh, guys who started, I says, I have pneumonia, I'm very ill. And he came to my studio, well, I said, stay away, uh, far away. And his name was Thierry. Thierry, he's actually on my blog. And he goes, you have too many work, you gotta stop showing. And he picked this, this work and this is what costs, and you wanna show an international art fair. So I got in the Cleo art fair, and I happened to be in a guest of guests. Like, I'm a very lucky person in a way. Immediately I was like in guest guest, and I'm still in, I think it's online. And so and then I happened to be, my friend took me to Pampala place where filled with roses and butterflies and two level of floors and you know the uh, uh, Russian place, uh, the Georgian place, Papala and 30th oh. Street, yeah Papala. Papala owner saw my work and he just loved it because then I feel like this place I feel so comfortable and I feel like home here and because it was uh, like butterflies and roses uh, like sculptures everywhere, he had a very distinctive style of taste right. and right. elegant. So, he says, I'm going to clear everything out and you're going to show all your work. And then he came to my studio. Here is, I never even shown it anywhere. He came to my studio. He's, I took a picture of him. He brought flowers to Georgia. He had a lot of class. Mm -hmm. He brought the flowers. And, 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 and he goes, I'm going to clear everything out. And, you're gonna, and then I, without he ever asking anything, and he hung my artwork until it was closed for six months. He wanted me to be discovered in New York City in his place in Midtown. So he showed 55 of my five. Feet. Here I never showed anywhere. Suddenly I have a solo show, which I asked him, but the February, I, February, I had a pneumonia. And I just signed up in LinkedIn in the professional artist group he belonged to and I belong to. And one of the questions came in my email while I was, you know, I've never looked at online, but I was so sick in a bed for so long. I started to get online, it says, is nudity offensive in art? There was a question. So I said, you guys have nothing better to do. Like, they didn't even like my question. They liked everybody else's question. It says, like, we are born that way. So what's so shame about? Something like that I wrote. And there's a sixth person, I think it was him. I think he was sixth person commented. Something beautiful, profound writing came from out of blue in six lines. I only read it because it was beginning six. And I said, excuse me, darling, I have a lot of nudity in my paintings and I would like to use your word. And so my friends know this is art. And that's, you know, guys says, who's your model all the time asking? It was really annoying. He says, can I use your word? And he gave me permission, so I posted. Sure. Then while I'm posting, it says that I'm the public art permission right at the bottom. When I wanted to post you, after I got your permission, your title was there, but your title was after I got permission was there. And I said, oh my God, this is a figment. Now I'm really posting it. <laughs> and that's how it became a, it became a because, because he was the only one, maybe, uh, seems like everybody only wanted to do abstract, or different things. Yeah. Seems like he was the only one in such a high place <coughs> since. It's a strange thing. So, I love abstract work. I, I, I think some of the most profound images are non-representational. 
but the idea to segregate in any way over 2,000 years of art practice, which has often been about the human form, I, I think is something we really need to discuss. And why are people, you can like something or not like something, but to be offended by it, to me, is nonsense. And, and it's, it's systemic to the problems we face as a species today, is that we are getting so upset about things that are so minor and profound. And the world is just decaying around us. I live in California, a couple of miles, you know, a couple of hours drive north of where I live, you cannot breathe the air because of 17 huge wildfires that are all the heck over my state. That's something to be offended about. Right. The way we are born, or the way some people choose to go to the beach, or the way we are when we are in bed with someone or by ourselves, is not something to be offended about. We have some real issues to be offended about. Racism, we should be offended about. Sexism, we should be offended about. Homophobia, we should be offended about. On and on and on. But the fact that someone even raised that question. Who did he offense it? Right, it's like, oh my God, what is wrong with us? I wish I could remember what you said. I have no idea what I said. Yeah. But I, I have, have no idea what I said. I haven't quoted, but actually on my blog, and when my artwork, uh, one thing I do want to say, so his belief of this, he is in a very high authority. It was a very refreshing to me and meet him to who see inclusive that artwork should be. What he said was, in, it's your work, I remember, your work is uh, what's it like to be alive mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, be alive. And therefore, it should be included in art form. But you said, you must understand at the same time what the high art of artwork you were thinking. Right. You know, that we do, look, for better or worse, art is an industry. And in the highest circles of art, it's a very well healed industry. It's a luxury item. And there are certain people who are protecting their brands, yeah. one of which is abstract expressionism. There's a lot of people very heavily invested in so-called blue chip art. And that stuff, the Franz Kleins, the Mark Rothkos, the Jackson Pollocks, the Dakutis. I like that stuff. But I don't think that's all there is. But people who buy and sell that need to protect, protect their, their brand. They so they diminish, they negate anything that isn't what they're selling. Smart business. But it is another kind of bigotry. It's a kind, it's an artistic kind of racism. To not like something because they are pictures of figures is a kind of bigotry that we as art lovers cannot. We can't go there. You can like it, you can't, you cannot like it, but you cannot be a you can't say it's not art. Right. That's it's the that's right. It blows my mind when people decide something is not art. It's it don't make just, any sense. So that's what uh, he's believing that. And also when I was in the theory and then when I had a fifty five painting at the time, I didn't do this this started in two thousand eighteen. So when I showed this in two thousand sixteen, I approached to somebody who visited me from two thousand ten. And at the end, when he says, I only carry intellectual art. And, and, and that word, I started crying. And I just want to be proved by somebody. And somebody's so big, and I just started crying. And I remember at the time, the cave was a lot of pieces. 
let me get back to you tomorrow. And our friendship abounded because he explained to me what really goes on in high art work. But you, he comforted me, said that your work is everything about a human, what's it like to be human, and therefore it should be cherished. And do not, and intellectual art means it's not that your art is ignorant. Right. He says it's just, just a certain kind of work that the high ops in our work, you said, was a certain kind of, just like you said, abstract expressionism and certain conceptualism. After that, they don't want to promote and up at upper class. So I end up writing that person who said, I don't, I only carry intellectual art. I, by four months later, I wrote a long letter about how you was kind of uh, stuck in the old school of a hundred years, <laughs> more than a hundred years. So therefore, uh, uh, everyone that you train everybody, you best basically like uh, manufacturing everybody. They go in with a very new idea, they come out the whole same. And and then with your power, I said, you should say it otherwise. So like we all know the term paradigm. It's in a paradigm shift. The term came from the science historian. The rule book, the structure of scientific revolutions, is absolutely applicable to art. You get pioneers who create a new form, then you get early adopters, and then it becomes kind of a cliche. And the cliche lasts for a good long time. But that cliche. In art, world lasts for too long. And in science, too, you know, in a lot of ways. But they become industries. So there's a lot of people whose bread and butter is keeping the way things are. Yeah. And do they know better? Some do. A lot don't. You know, I mean, I left to my own devices, I'm kind of like, I like to like get under people's skin and mess with them and stuff. <laughs> and, and I have a dear friend who's a L.A. art critic, and and one day I ran into him in a restaurant, and then we sat down together. And I decided to kind of just like mess with him, and I don't want to put down any specific artists, but I I mentioned one very major blue chip artist, and and one of his pieces, which I sort of think is a scam, and and I asked the art critic, why is this one of the great achievements of the late twentieth century? And I thought, since we were just by ourselves and it was off the record, he was going to roll his eyes and say, oh, brother, no. He went on for 20 minutes as to why this is one of the greatest achievements in human civilization. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, my God, he's a true believer. <laughs> he really, he's not full of it. He really believes that some art is way better than others. Or that intellectual much. art yeah. is so much better than work that is sensual or God forbid, <laughs> there is a God, spiritual, you know, which to a lot of art circles was like, it's just dismissed. If it has any sense of spiritual belief, um, and this is nonsense. This is exactly what's wrong with our species. It's like, you don't have to like it. But like you said, don't say it isn't art because it's somebody's art. I also think like, you know, with the pandemic and how art is being seen now, that that paradigm has shifted. And when you're talking right. about the blue chip, you know, like, the auctions and you know these fears. You know, one of the things that has been the outcome of the pandemic is there's more narrative at that table. And you know, and what you're talking about I do is agree. appraisal. Everything we're talking about yeah. was pre pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The appraisal and you know, and you know, investment of controlling the narrative. And because everything became outside the room. And other people had opportunities to view things because it wasn't like, oh, so and so gallery is open. And it, we were just like all vested in like going online. I think it kind of broke in that pandemic, you know, closure that we had before the coronavirus. 
happens in the Aussie. I, I and, mean, I hope it persists. And, uh, and some of the things that I was hearing is like some of those old time blue chip artists were not doing as well after the pandemic because people had new lenses to look at art. And, you know, there was new voices at that table, new visual at that table. So I, I think, you, you know, coronavirus has shifted a lot, you know, yeah. and, you yeah. And I, and I, I agree, and at least something that's happening in, in, in Santa Monica. So, like, like everyone, artists were hit really badly with the pandemic. Because when you're worrying about your own, you know, livelihood or health, the last thing in the world you're thinking about is going by art, right? Mm -hmm. So artists in Santa Monica, which is, you know, a ridiculously overpriced um, we're devastated. So we created in our tiny little city basically the equivalent of the WPA. And we went to the city government and said, you got to free us up some money. And we just started handing out grants to anyone who said they were an artist. Like, and they weren't huge grants, but it kept a lot of them from being homeless. And it kept a lot of their kids fed. and, and and in doing so, now we realize the community-based art, which had been another thing that was dismissed by the, the professional art industry, that community-based art really is important. And, um, and obviously, you know, with the, the tragedy last year of George Floyd and all the other senselessly killed. The, the, the understanding that even political art, which again had been just excluded from the gallery world, that's suddenly like, yes. And so there is a new conversation. Now, the Hauser and Wirths and the Gagosians and the Castelli, they got a lot of power. So are they gonna kind of push back? Of course. But I do agree, it's not going to be the same. It's yeah. not. Now, who gets into the Guggenheim or the Whitney? Well, last that's going to be. It's already changed because they had an exhibit. I can't remember the artist, but it was all on the top floor, all spiritual work. That's great. It was abstract, right. but it was spiritual. Clearly, her theme. Clearly identified in the biography. We took a and, we took a change. Is going to happen. I can't we went to a carry. We went to this exhibit. So, yeah. and then at the Whitney, mm -hmm. definitely they had an exhibit of somebody who's done political art right. through the Vietnam War and everything. So, so I it is suddenly it suddenly changed. I don't know. I can't say. For MoMA, but definitely in the new museum, they I've all, seen the they all political have. stuff, a lot of political stuff. At the Whitney, well, they've had obviously Black Lives Matter hit them in the head. For sure. Because they have every, every museum, big and small, right. everywhere, even outside the United States. Now, in my old age, right. so one of my COVID reactions, so I assume you know, my life partner of 27 years died last March, just at the beginning of COVID. And so simultaneously, I lost the love of my life. Three months before that, my sister died of cancer, and then COVID, and we're in LA and we're in a lockdown. And I'm like, I am not going to sit in my apartment all day long. That my studio, the art center of my studio was in, was in lockdown. I wasn't legally allowed to go to my studio so I went back to school. So late in life, I'm going for a master's in museum studies at Harvard. Do I ever expect to work in a museum? No way. But I'm listening to what all the, well, everyone else in the program, of course, is like 23, 25, right? Mm -hmm. but, but I'm listening to the professors and I'm listening to the 20-somethings and their world is not the gospel according to the museum model. Right. Right. Their world is not the gospel according to the Getty. 
right. not the gospel according to Los Angeles County if you want. And it's like, wow. It may not change tomorrow, but three or four years from now, five years from now, it's, it is going to be a new conversation. And so, yeah. Whether Mocha has turned around right, well, Mocha in LA certainly hasn't. So the Museum of Contemporary Art in LA has been blasted for its resistance to diversity. It's toxic work in my All of the things that have been stated as wrong, Mocha's been hit with. Mm -hmm. So if they don't reinvent themselves, they're not going to rest. So, yeah. All right, guys. Um, thank you. Thank you.